Pan American World Airways is known as a symbol of the historic days of aviation. While the airline was the largest international carrier in the United States until its demise in 1991, it was a founding member of the IATA. Founded in 1927, the airline would be 94 had it survived to the present day. Instead, it ceased operations in 1991 at 64 years old. The Pan AM li name lives on, however, and has now been adopted by a private rail transport company. So in today's video, we are going to discuss the rise and fall of Pan AM Airlines. It was the most important international airline in the United States until 1991, and it was distinguished worldwide for introducing new features in the market. It was the second largest brand in America behind Coca-Cola. Its name and logo were recognized all over the world. The glamour of the company reached different film productions, even award-winning Leonardo DiCaprio played a rogue airline pilot in Steven Spielberg, Catch Me If You Can. Pan American World Airways established a new way of traveling. Pan Am meant the popularization and prestige of the air service. They always sought to innovate. They invented the economy class. Today's big airlines learned from what they did. The airline was able to win the admiration of travelers, businessmen, and experts in the field. It was also the first airline to complete a flight around the globe. So how did it all start? After the U.S. State Department discovered that Germans were building an airline in Colombia, three U.S. companies wanted to anticipate and reach all of Latin America. That's when Juan Terry Trippi appeared, who was a man of vision, and he wanted to have the largest company in the world and reach everywhere. He was inspired by the sea and the uniform of Pan Am pilots resembled that of ship captains. With the outbreak of World War II, the company had more experience in international flights than the US military itself. When the attack on Pearl Harbor happened, Pan American had services to 52 countries and had 8,750 employees. It sent its pilots and planes into the fight, it transported supplies, uh, it even transported the uranium for the atomic bomb. It also helped with the construction of airports, instructed pilots, and offered the radio services. Pan American was known as the right arm of the State Department. During the war, practically no American aircraft could cross the Atlantic in one flight. In Africa, the company built bases so that the American planes could continue their journey. As the world passed through one of the darkest stages in contemporary history, Pan Am was blazing. By 1958, it offered regular flights to every continent in the, on the planet except Antarctica. In 1970 alone, it carried 11 million passengers to 56 countries all over the world. By then, seaplanes were already history and it was crowned the first airline to fly a Boeing 747 in regular service. In all the advertisements, allusion was made to luxury, comfort, and the slogan was the most experienced airline in the world. The main thing for the crew was to make the passengers feel satisfied with the services. However, the fall of the airline started when the price of oil in 1970s rose by almost 300%. This affected Pan Am more than any other airline because they had long haul itineraries uh, in addition to the fact that demand for these routes began to decline. The company had long wanted to operate within the country, but rival firms managed to influence Congress and convince its members that if that happened, it would be a monopoly. So in 1978, when the Air Deregulation Act was passed, uh, which meant that the government could no longer control the routes, Pan Am proposed a merger with the national airlines. That implied an additional investment of $437 million. Uh, it was never allowed to do internal flights and that had a lot to do with the fall. So they did not know how to enter the North American market. 
as because as they did not understand the game of deregulation so they began to go into debt and decapitalize they sold and rented european planes in 1985 um it sold the pacific routes to united airlines with the intention of minimizing the crisis but in 1986 a tragedy struck the company Palestinian militants of the Abu Nidal organization took the plane from Bombay when it made a stopover in Karachi. Four armed men disguised as airport security agents fired into the air. The tragedy ended with 22 people dead and around 15 injured. 2 years later another incident went around the world. An aircraft that left London bound for New York suffered a terrorist attack. it exploded in mid mid air over locker bay uh, scotland 243 passengers 16 crew members and 11 city residents were killed so the company started to go wrong with deregulation they were never comfortable because they couldn't compete that way they never had a good coverage in the united states and always left from the international business and that was conditioned by the foreign policy of the united states other countries saw it as a pentagon line especially in the middle east so that impacted their business as well and the final thrust was the accident they handled the crisis badly in 1991 it declared bankruptcy delta bought most of pan am it acquired its european routes 45 jets its flagship terminal um, among all other things In 1996 investors tried to revive the brand but its reputation was shattered. Today only the memory of what was the most important airline in the United States remains. Their innovations and ways of operating paved the way for today's international travel. From reserving a seat, choosing a class or going around the world, it was all dreamed up by Pan American World Airways. Thank you.